I welcome you to this special broadcast. The Almighty God bless you. The Almighty God bless everyone that is listening to me. I have a special message from God that I would like to share with everybody today. Adrandere Olua is my name. Presently, as you can see, I'm at the turn of Apostle Ayo Babalola. This is where Babalola was buried. Apostle Ayo Babalola died about 61 years ago. And I believe God has a very strong message for some people. He died July 26, 1959. And his corpse was brought to this place from Hede and he was buried. You can see this is Babalola's tomb. Last year I was praying on the mountain at Idoile in the middle of the night and the Holy Spirit said to me, He said I should write a book on Apostle Ayobabarola. And I came up with two books, Act of Power and Testimony of Grace. And on July 26, last year, the very day, the 68th post almost anniversary of Babalola, I had in a vision that some people gathered themselves together in a family where I am right now. And they were celebrating, dancing around the town, celebrating the saint, Apostle Joseph Ayo Babalola. But in that vision, I saw that as many people were dancing across the town, I saw some masquerade around them in their midst. And I was asking God, what are masquerade doing in the midst of God's children? And the Holy Ghost gave me revelation, the interpretation of that dream. And that is what I want to share with you today because I got another revelation today. I slept yesterday night and in the night I saw Apostle Yobabalola in my dream. And that is the first time I'll be seeing him clearly, even though I've been working, doing research on him for the past three years. But today I saw him clearly in the vision. And he was standing on the altar. He dressed with palms. He was putting on palms. And a preacher was preaching on the altar. He was not saying anything. He was just standing on the altar. And a copy of my book, this book, Testimony of Grace, was opened on the altar. And the revelation was over. And when I woke up, I was asking God, what's the meaning of this? He said the same message he gave me last year about the church is what God wants me to say again. That is why the vision is coming for the second time. So today, I'm not going to be preaching or saying anything. I've documented the vision and the interpretation of that vision in my book. It's the last chapter. I'm just here to read the last chapter to you. And I want you to follow me. To follow me diligently and listen to me and please i want you to share this broadcast because it's a special broadcast as you can see i'm doing it at the tomb of apostle joseph ayobabalala i'm right here at efanlai it's a special message and it has to be done in a special place i'm on the land of mercy can i pray for you you will receive mercy that we announce you to your generation in jesus name I came here one about two years ago, where I was standing. We came to pray over the clothes of Babalola we did in our church. About seven evangelists came. And when we came, the people said, let us go inside the tomb to go and pray over the clothes. The Lord said to me, he said, he said no, he said, you stand on the land of mercy. He said, stand on the land of mercy here. And I stood on the land of mercy. And when they prayed, I was praying where I was standing. And where I was praying, nobody lay hand on me. And I see the, the wind blew. And I fell down. I found myself on the ground. Nobody touched me. 
that grace, the apostolic grace, is contagious. I use the same covenant to pray for you, that where you are right now, nobody is touching you, but the Almighty God will touch you, and the wind of the Holy Ghost, the power of the Holy Ghost will rest upon you. Please, I want to read. I just want to follow what God said I should do. And in this book, Testimony of Grace, the last chapter that I wrote there is the message that I want to give to the world. And I want everybody, you can do, you can host this, you can do, a, you can host the wash, you can play it and share it in all the platform you have so that a lot of people can join. I pray for you. The Almighty God that visited me tonight. You know, Jesus Christ was on the mountain. Some people said it is not good for you to go go to the tomb and pray and say all that. But they go to Jerusalem. They go for sightseeing in Jerusalem, even though they condemn us when we come to the tomb and pray. But they also go to Jerusalem, go to River Jordan, and see historical sites. There is nothing wrong for you coming to where a man that found grace prayed. Jesus himself, at a point in his life, the dead that were sent with God needed to appear to him. Moses and Elijah appear to Jesus. So if that is possible, so if I say I saw Babylon in my dream, believe me, I'm not making it up. I don't have reason to lie. And the revelation God wants me to tell you is, you should stop being a, a, a masquerade Christian. In that revelation, I saw a lot of people celebrating your Babylon, but among them that are masquerade, and I said, God, what is the meaning of this masquerade? And this is the interpretation God gave me. And I wrote it down in my book, Testimony of Grace. And I want to read. I'm going to take about, about 12 or 13 minutes to read. On July 26, 2019, I saw in a vision multitude of people that gathered at Efanalaya, celebrating and dancing around the town. They were celebrating the remembrance and glorious departure of Apostle Joseph Ayobabalala. However, among this multitude of people, I saw a great number of masquerade. I asked myself, what are masquerade doing in the midst of God's children? What are masquerade doing among the people that are celebrating the remembrance of Saint Joseph Ayobabalala in the dream? I ran inside the building to take photographs of this mixed multitude. But inside that building, I saw an old man, tall and black in complexion. And that is the complex, uh, description of Ayobabalala. He was naked and he was crying. I believe that was him last year, but today I saw him. He was naked and he was crying. What could be the reason why this old man is crying? Then I woke up. The revelation I saw last year, I saw him in this town, in this town where he was buried. I saw him that he was crying. And I asked God, why would this great apostle be crying? But this is what happened when I woke up. I forgot the dream. I will not read that place. In case you forgot your dream, this is what I did that day. Immediately I forgot the dream. I knew I had a revelation. So I began to speak in the spirit. Anytime you have a revelation in your, in your dream and you forget, the best way to get the revelation back is to speak in tongues. And if you don't have the grace now, you can praise God. That is what I did. I praised God. I, I spoke in tongues for about 30 minutes and I got the revelation back. So when I was praying in tongues, I'm talking about 10 attribute of a masquerade are you a christian or you are a masquerade when i was praying tongue seeking for the understanding of the dream the lord said this is not the time to write tributes but the time for us to reflect on our ways i said what about this masquerade among god's children the lord responded and asked me a question he said what are the attributes of masquerade i began to think and i came up with the following characteristics of masquerade and now it defines us as christians here are 10 main attributes of a masquerade let me summarize everything that i've said for the sake of people that are join, just joining us i said last year 
on July 26, I saw in a revelation in a far lie where I am, where Babalola was buried, that people were celebrating the remembrance of Babalola. But among the multitude, I saw some masquerade. And I asked God, why would masquerade be among the people that are celebrating the remembrance of the saints? And God said to me, what are the attributes of a masquerade? That masquerade is describing you and myself. And that is where I'm doing this broadcast. I'm supposed to be praying violently for people on this place. But God said, this is not the time to pray. But time, some people must listen. God is not happy to a lot of us that we are followers and inheritor of the apostolic grace of Ayobabalala. And God gave me 10 attributes of a masculine. And we have many of them on our holy altar today, regardless of whether you are a member of a church or whether you are the pastor of a church. If you are still lying, you are a masquerade, regardless of your title in the church. Whether you are the pastor, whether you are the bishop, some people even say white lies. If you are still a liar, God is not happy. God sees you as a masquerade. So a liar is a masquerade. There are men of God who prophesy lies to get honor from members and to exploit them. People who say, Thus says the Lord, when God has not spoken. For instance, if I have not seen Babalala and I said I saw him, God will judge me. God will judge you. That prophecy you are giving your church, that revelation you are giving your church, is it truly from God? If you are a liar, the first way to know if you are a masculine Christian is that you, you lie. So, deception. The second one is oppression. Masquerade are fearful because most of them are oppressive by nature. During festivals, most masquerade beat and molest onlookers. Likewise, many people see masquerade as devil incarnate. Some mentors are tormentors. For some people, the only thing they use their positions and God given testimony. The network is really bad. I'm very sorry for the disconnection. I, I'll give you like a minute. Just like I've said before, the, the network is really bad here. But as I've said, I've mentioned five ways through which you can know if you are a, a read Christian or a masculine. And the first one I mentioned is deception. If you are still lying to people, but they didn't see you as a Christian, God see you as a masculine. If you still love to oppress people under you, God didn't see you as a Christian, but as a masculine. If you are still parading the houses of Abalis, looking for sham, looking for other God to support your ministry, or if you are a member, you are still going to Abalis for healing, then God sees you as a masculine. And the fourth one, I said, revengeful. People who love, who seek opportunity to pay evil back for evil. I said they are masculine. And this fifth one is pretenders. Are you a pretender in the house of God? The things you are doing, are you doing it to please God or to please men? You see, masculine, they love to pretend. Are you also a pretender? And the, the sixth one, attention seekers. Many people give offering in the church just for people to know they are the one doing everything for God. What you are doing right now, the program you are doing right now, what you are engaging right now, are you doing it to glorify God or you are just seeing, you're just seeking attention online? Many people are doing things online because others are doing it. Are you just, are you genuinely promoting the kingdom of God or you are in competition with people? What you are doing, is it, is it rooted in the, in the spirit of competition or is it a commandment from God? A lot of people are doing stuff for God today that is not rooted in the leading of the Holy Spirit. But just because others are doing it, you too you are doing it. God is not happy. The spirit of competition is not the spirit of God. It's from the devil. Make sure anything you are doing for God, make sure it is rooted and guided by the Holy Spirit. Disres disrespectful. Disrespectful. Have you seen... A masquerade that is respectful no they don't value authority they don't value authority a masquerade can beat the traditional leader of his community at Donny parade the spirit of pride is known worldwide with masquerade masquerade are prideful they are not gentle they are not humble but prideful 
So if you still trace pride to yourself, then something is not is not right with your Christian life. They unapproachable. Some people cannot be approached. They see themselves as small God. Any small given grace upon their life like this, they become small God. They are no longer approachable. They guide themselves with four, five, twenty, some sometimes twenty security because of small anointing that is upon them. Are you guided by man or be guided by God? Over overbearing attitude. Some people they believe. Senior pastors they believe. Whenever God wants to speak, God must speak to them. God cannot speak to the people under them. You are a masquerade because the Holy Spirit is the chief executive officer of the church. He can decide to speak to anyone. If I, he can leave you and speak to the youngest. He left Eli and spoke to eight years old Samuel. When God is speaking to people around you, your own duty is to pay attention, not to be jealous and say, oh, because God has not spoken to me, I'm not going to listen. That is an attitude of a masculine. When as, a, as an husband, you don't believe God can speak to your wife through you. When as a parent, you, can, you don't believe God can speak to your children to you. I remember a story of a man. He was terribly sick and he has a young boy. The young boy will come to him and say, Daddy, let me pray for you. And the man will look at his young boy, you, you want to pray for me? Get out. And the boy was coming again and again. Daddy, let me pray for you. And the man will look at you, you this small boy, leave me alone. I'm sick, leave me alone. And he now went to a prophet. And when he got to that prophet, the prophet told him, say, a boy was coming to you that he should pray for you, that the authority and the power to heal your sickness has been deposited in his tongue. And the man said, boy, it's my small boy at home. The prophet told him, if I pray for you, God will know you. The healing, the power to heal you has been given to that small boy. He said, go back home and don't force him. Wait till the another time when that boy will come to you and say, daddy, let me pray for you. And the man patiently waited. And the boy, the small boy just ran again and said, daddy, let me pray for you. And the old man knelt down and he prayed and the sickness disappeared immediately. You might be thinking God is going to send general evangelists to you. Whereas the, the person that just converted through you might be the one that will pray to you for your breakthrough. When you don't respect people based on their position and their relationship to you, it, it is possible for you to disrespect God. I just want to, to, to encourage you. Please don't say because as a senior pastor of your church that God has not spoken to you, that he has not spoken to others. The Holy Ghost. And if you are typing, I want you to type this. The Holy Ghost is the chief executive officer of the church. He alone decides who gets revelation from God. For instance, in Christ's Apostolic Church, I don't have any positions at now. But God decided, to, okay, you want to speak today. And he gave the revelation to me. I saw Ayoba Balala in my dream. There are senior pastors, powerful evangelists, senior uh, superintendent. God is with them. But the Holy Spirit in his wisdom decides to speak to whosoever is pleased. Please, don't leave. I will be praying for you after the broadcast. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Then, I've discussed prideful. And the last one that I want to discuss is merchant pressures. The last one that I want to discuss is merchant pressures. People who always repair, ask people to give, even when there is no need for the ministry. I believe the majority of the things I'm, I'm saying, they are for pastors. When there is no need for you to collect offering from people, please, God is not a beggar. Don't tell God to beggar. When there is genuine need, there is nothing wrong for us as pastors, as evangelists, to ask people to support a vision. But when there is no genuine need, there is no need for us asking people, we must not turn revival to a money-making platform. We must not turn, it is not all revival that you call people out to, to, to donate. It is not. When Apostle Ayobabalala was alive, that was not his tradition. You, the anointing of God over your life is not an ATM. The anointing of God over your life is not an ATM. I've said some few things, and I'm going to do a recap and pray for you. I don't know why Apostle Ayobabalala appears to me today. 
But when such thing happen, it means there is a covenant renewal. It means there is a power release in heaven. And I'm going to use that auction to pray for you. And distance is not a barrier. My message today is, don't be a masculine Christian. Be genuine in your relationship with God. If you are still lying, you are a masculine, you are not a Christian. If you are deceptive, if you are still prideful, if you are disrespectful, if you are not accommodating, because you now have one small level of anointing, you are now treating people as if they are nobody. You don't grow in grace when you are prideful. If our God is consistently and on a daily basis working against the pride, you cannot grow in God. You cannot grow in grace by walking in pride. Please, the more your anointing increase, learn to be humble by yourself. I'm experiencing some spiritual dimension in these last few days that is making me to be humble. I don't understand. When God decides to be using your images to talk, to speak to a lot of people in their dream, you must know you have entered into a realm that is no longer you. That is not the time to be prideful. Pride is not known to the life of Apostle Joseph Ayobabalala. I pray for you. When Babalala was, when Babalala was, when Babalala died, they brought his corpse from a day to a for here and he was lying down where i was standing he, and a man i'm going to show you that man right now he's dead also i'm going to show you that is his grave and this man i'm going to show you i believe you can see that this man why babalula was still lying down it was said that his dead body was sweating his dead body was sweating and this man that was buried here he was, he's also a prophet came and used his hand to rub the face of the sweat that was coming out from the dead body of ayobabarana and used the water the sweat to rub his face and instantly he became a prophet a renowned prophet that walked powerfully in this town can I pray for you? I deliver my message. Well, I, I want to pray for you. Shari Kade Masekede. The Lord says, stop being a masquerade Christian. Be a genuine one. Don't, don't live your life to please Satan in the secret and still be pretending to be follower of God in the public. Don't go to Habalis in the midnight and come to church and be preaching during the day. God is saying, separate yourself totally and be committed to God. I want you to be saying it because I'm going to be praying some prayer for you. Rashika de Maseka de Leke Dilema Dada Sikiri Mashakana. If truly the spirit of a man never died, I believe there is a power of God here and I've experienced it. Everything you have prayed for. When the children of Israelites were, were in the bondage for 400 years, in Exodus chapter 2, the last three verses, the, Lord, the Bible said they cry unto God. Let me show you. In Exodus chapter 2, the last three verses, Exodus chapter, chapter 2, the last, from verse 22 to 25, and Verse 23, and it, and it came to pass in process of time that the king of Egypt died, and the children of Israel sighed by reason of the bondage, and they cried, and their cry came up unto God by reason of the bondage, and God had their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham and Isaac and with Jacob, and God looked upon the children of Israel, and God had respect unto them. They were in bondage, they needed freedom, they cried unto God. But God did not hurt them because of them. The Bible says God hurt them and remember the covenant he had with Abraham, with Isaac, and with Jacob. It means that it's a covenant upon the Father that God used to deliver the children. I'm praying with, to God Almighty that the covenant God had with Ayobabalala, one of that covenant that God revealed to me is that 
all the children of Ayo Babalola, the sons, the spiritual sons of Ayo Babalola will walk in power. That is one of the covenant. If God remembered the children of Israelites as a result of the covenant he had with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I pray for you. The power of God will rest upon you. The glory of God will rest upon you. I'm seeing a tree. I'm seeing a tree. And I'm seeing maize inside that tree. I pray for the work of your hand. It will bring multiplication. I pray for the work of your the work of your hand. The angel of help will work with you. The angel of help will work with you. The angel of transformation will deliver a message for you. Every spirit of fear that you have in your mind that can stop you from getting to where God wants you to get to. I pray that spirit of fear is departing from you. That evil dream that you had in the night, you will not see, you will not see the manifestation. Great grace will be upon you. The prayer I want to pray for you today is you are blessed in Jesus' name. The Almighty God will bless your spiritual life. The Almighty God will bless your spiritual life with all the gift of the Spirit. Receive it in Jesus' name. The Almighty God will bless the work of your hand. Financially, you are blessed. I said financially, you are blessed. The work of your hand is blessed. That land where you are living will obey you. I said that land where you are living, the goodness of that land will find you. That land where you are living, the goodness of that land will find you. That land where you are living, the goodness of that land will I pray with you with the covenant that God used to raise Babylon. And if truly I saw him in Revelation today, I released the apostolic grace and the mantle. Elisha said, he called upon the God of his father and God answered. I pray every difficult line that you that you want every every step that you wanted to pass but that you have not been able to pass every stage that you wanted to cross that you have not been able to cross maritally receive grace to cross to the other side in jesus name i see a ladder and i'm seeing some people moving to the top of that ladder you will rise from where you are to the peak of your destiny in jesus name the power of evil will not be able to stop you the demonic angel that have been working against you and me the almighty god will stop them every answers that god are sent from heaven but that you have not released you are getting them within the 24 hours in jesus name thank you holy spirit thank you jesus please if you are watching this program i want you to share i encourage you to give your life to christ god will soon come jesus will soon come back it is true that i've prayed for you live right Live a righteous life. Don't be a masculine Christian. Masculine is full of deception. Be truthful to God and have a genuine relationship with God. By that, God will bless you with power. Power is a gift. Receive that gift in Jesus' name. I want you to share this message. I want you to get across to the world. God is asking you and me that we should stop being a masculine Christian. The Almighty God bless you. Thank you, Jesus' name. Shakada, the Lord bless you as you share this post in Jesus' name. Amen.